Hair jigs have been around forever. 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 Literally been catching walleyes for decades. And it's uh, kind of a rediscovered old school technique that's been getting a lot of buzz because they flat out catch fish. And I swear for a few years there, people kind of forgot about them. Or maybe it's that they didn't give off that super cool vibe of the reaction bites and snapping and bass fishing for walleyes. But there's a time and a place for everything. And if you've been trying to find VMC Moontails since they came out last year, you know that it's like trying to find, I don't know, toilet paper in March 2020. They're just disappearing. Every time I see two or three on a peg in the store, I snipe them because you can't find them anywhere. Because if you used them last year, you know that they catch fish. But there's a bunch of different hair jig styles and options out there. And in my opinion, each of them have their own kind of time and place for catching walleyes. And you don't have to have a moon tail to catch walleyes as fishing opener or the first few weeks of the season here where I'm at in Minnesota. So I'm gonna break down three different styles, when and why I like to use each, and when I think they shine. Now the first one I mentioned was the moon tail. And we'll come back to that one because in my opinion, it really shines as water starts to warm up a little bit. And I think there's an even better option earlier in the season when the water's still cold and walleyes are a little more lethargic. And that's the VMC bucktail jig. Now I'll hold them up so you can compare the differences, but you'll see it's a little bit shorter profile, bulkier hair, it's not as sparse, little shorter shank hook, and the head is more like a pear. It's a little wider versus the Moontail's thin, thin head. And so the reason that this one is gonna catch more fish early on, for me anyway, is the water's colder around fishing opener in the first couple weeks of the season. I mean, most of these lakes here, the bigger lakes, the walleye factories, aren't even barely creeping up to 55 degrees yet. So those walleyes have spawned and are pushed off, recovering a little bit, and you've got fish starting to move back up. A lot of the males are still hanging out on the edge of those flats. And this is the first one I'm grabbing. Because those fish in this cooler water and post-spawn, early in the post-spawn period, are still a little bit more lethargic, you want something that's a little bit slower fall, a little bit more subtle. And this one, I use as light of one as I can get away with. An eighth ounce, if possible, if I'm fishing up in that, you know, five to seven, eight, nine foot range or if it's not windy a little bit deeper, then I'll bump up to a quarter once I get to that like 10 to 14 foot cabbage or if it's a windier day. But that thicker, coarser hair is gonna make this thing fall a lot more slow. And I'll put a fat head or a shiner aid on there. You can even put a plastic on it or fishy by itself. But if I was gonna do one thing for opener range, first couple weeks walleyes, bucktail jig with maybe a fat head on there cause they're cheap and they catch fish. And what I'm doing is pitching this out to that edge of those spawning areas and the edge of those flats. Wherever you got newly emerging weeds, it's unbelievable. If you go out on a calm, sunny day and cruise around, you'll just see white tips taking off and scattering. They're up there, man. They're just tough to get to bite because this clear water and they're finicky and fussy. And as the water warms up, that'll change a little bit. But for now, real slow, subtle presentation. What I do is I throw it out there and it's not those big snaps or rips. It's just kind of little one foot hops or I'll even hang it. If I'm using a lighter eighth ounce of the fat head, that thing falls crazy slow and I'll almost just kind of do lifts and drops and lifts and drops in that cold water. Pay attention when you get a bite and duplicate that. If they want those slow lifts and drops, keep doing it. But if you give it a little one foot pop and they're hitting it, you know, everybody in the boat's got to be doing something a little bit different to figure it out. But I'm telling you, that thing in cold water is the deal. And similar is going to be the VMC hot skirt. It's actually going to glow. This whole skirt, hot skirt, because it glows and it gives off that shine. It's got flashaboo fibers in there to reflect light. So that's my option in dirtier, nastier water where you need something that's got a little bit more visibility and they've got some bright, gaudy colors to get those reaction bites and call fish in. And also you'll notice that the head design, if I can unhook my finger, is more of that darter shape head versus the pair of the bucktail. And so especially if you're in river systems where you've got current, that allows that bait to cut current and not lift as much so you can get by with a little bit lighter jig versus imagine trying to go into the current with a fist like a pear shape. So my opinion, dirty water, river systems, hot skirt shines, especially if you throw fat head on there or whatnot. 
So now once the water starts getting warmer and those fish are more aggressive, they're willing to chase a little bit, you want to get a reaction bite because they're willing to go after something that darts past their head. Now that's where the moon tail shines and you can see the head is really thin. It's funny because the first time I saw pictures of this, I thought this was a standard neon moon eye head, that kind of aspirin shape round. But no, it's like they put it in a vise and squashed it down flat. And thinner hairs on purpose because this bait is designed to be fished without bait, without plastics, and dart past those fish. So you're doing, it's almost like a hook set every time you rip it. It shoots up, darts back down, and gets those reaction bites deadly in cabbage and coontail weeds in that 10 to 15 foot range when the fish are recovered post spawn and start feeding up for the summer awesome bait but don't forget cold water lethargic walleyes early spring that bucktail kills them and i know you can find these in stock because everybody's sniping up the moon tails <laughs> now no matter which hair jig i'm fishing i try to keep my line set up pretty simple there's a couple of different circumstantial <laughs> things but the majority of the time, I'd say 90, 95% of the time, I'm using an eight or 10 pound suffix braid main line and about an eight foot fluorocarbon leader, eight pound typically, 10 pound if I'm up in the cabbage weeds and you need to actually pop that bait out of there or I'm dealing with some bigger fish or the good old pesky chain pickerel. And there's a few instances where I have gotten my butt absolutely handed to me by somebody running straight mono. And I don't necessarily think it's a visibility thing because I run really long leaders. Eight foot is about as long as you can do and not have that double uni knot reel up into your spool when you're casting. You got a six and a half, seven foot rod. You leave a foot or two feet of line out when you cast so that knot never goes up in your spool. It doesn't impact your casting distance. So that's a long leader and I doubt those walleyes are line shy from the line that's eight feet up ahead of the bait. But when somebody's using mono, like Suffix Advanced Mono that came out a couple years ago now, awesome stuff. It's just got a little different action for the bait. So that line floats and it's gonna be a little bit, I don't know, instead of the line cutting the water, it gets that bait a little more floaty, a little more subtle versus the harsher rips and snaps. There's just something to that in skinny water, especially if you're doing that like seven to nine foot range up shallow that just changes the action of that bait and makes it a little bit more rounded off and glidey. And I will always now at least have one rod spooled up for jig pitching with mono. And I think it was actually my first real good butt whooping with it was Al. And uh, yeah, he went like 20 to one on me and granted it's Al, so he probably just does that every time he fishes, but I was putting everything on identical to him, making the same casting angle, same action, same everything. Granted, he's in the front of the boat and he's like a fish vacuum and just sucks up every fish along a break line, but there should still be a couple that I sneak in behind him when he's taking a fish off or something, you know? And no, he just cleaned up and he waited until the end of the day to tell me that he was running straight, uh, I think he had eight pound suffix advanced mono on there. Like that would have been nice to know four hours ago and six or seven fish over 26 to 28 inches. Now, I briefly mentioned this earlier, but the first couple weeks of the season here, the types of areas that I'm gonna be targeting are the edges of big flats. If you've got any sort of current on the inside of those or areas where you know walleyes have spawned, could be a current system, a bridge area, could just be a shallower rocky shoreline. If you can find the first lip or structure outside from those areas, there's gonna be walleyes there. And for me, the biggest key is finding new emerging weeds. The other day I went out, was looking for crappies up shallow, and oh my gosh, there was walleyes all over the place, but it was only in spots where there was new cabbage, new coontail, green weeds. They're sparse still because they're just regrowing and there'd be a little gravel, a little rock here. And then as soon as you got, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet away and there was a patch of weeds, boom, four or five walleyes would take out of there. And opener couldn't come soon <laughs> enough, right? So fish that first lip off of the edges of those big flats. And you know, it depends on the lake you're on. That might be a five to seven foot drop. It might be a 
seven to 10, 12 foot drop, but whatever that first main lip is outside of the flats and outside of spawning areas, there's gonna be walleyes there. There's gonna be more males than anything because they stick around to those spawning areas for two, three weeks, sometimes a month after. But those bigger females that have pushed off and are recovering are sliding back up to eat and man, can it be a fun time to catch some fish up shallow. Anyway, it's bucktail season. Walleye opener is here, depending where you're at. Those fish are post-spawn, recovering, starting to feed, and they are very susceptible to the fuzz. 